Almost 10 years ago, I bought this double-decker bus and I turned it into an RV. I made several videos about it, like this one of the build, this one of the interior, and in this video I have shown what it had cost me. In today's video I want to show you what the design process looked like and I want to evaluate the choices I made and I'll answer this question. After some good, good thinking, I came to six fundamental first choices. First, I wanted it to be suitable for my family, so we would need two bedrooms with a total of four beds. Second, the kitchen and the living room would be somewhere on the bottom floor. There were two reasons for that, we can only stand up straight downstairs and that is important for working in the kitchen and I thought it to be more inviting to visitors with the living room downstairs. Third, with the living room and the kitchen downstairs, the two bedrooms and the bathroom only can go upstairs. That's a pretty smart thought. Fourth, the bathroom would go upstairs in the middle. It was just the most logical place. It will be fast reachable by the stairs in the back and the other areas on the top floor would effectively get their own stairs. Because of the low ceiling height I chose a sitting bath to shower in. Fifth, downstairs the last 4 meters of the bus would become some kind of utility room. And at last, the air conditioning that came with the bus was to be removed. That would only work with the engine running and I suspected we'd use the bus more often with the engine off. Now the more advanced designing could start. So I started making drawings in pencil, while at the same time creating the basics of the bus in SketchUp. Now this is the basic shape of the bus. The bus has two staircases, one on the left, right behind the driver's seat, and one in the back at the second door. Downstairs the floor has this more or less round going alley, while the floor upstairs is from front to back flat, only with these metal boxes of the stairs on it. As I said, already set, were two rooms, the utility room downstairs in the back behind the stairs, and the bathroom upstairs in the middle. Now I had to think where exactly the kitchen and the sitting area downstairs would go, and where the two bedrooms upstairs. I did lots of sketching with pencil and some ideas I worked out in SketchUp. Downstairs I tried several options. Sitting in the front, kitchen in the back, table on the right side of the bus. That same setup, but with the table at the left side of the bus. I tried to place the kitchen in the front and the sitting area in the back, but couldn't make that work. So eventually, I settled for sitting in the front, kitchen in the back. So far, so good. <laughs> Upstairs, I did my best to have the master bedroom in the front. I tried it with the door to the bathroom in the middle, on the left, and on the right. But I couldn't work it out, so the master bedroom ended in the back, with the bunk beds in the front. So after four years, how did it all work out? Good! We're traveling with a three-room apartment. Three separate rooms are rare in vehicles. The number of beds can be extended by two by laying a bed next to the bunk beds. Someone small can sleep on the couch as well. And with creativity loss is possible, we once slept eight. Visitors have only one step in. With other buses, it is mostly more steps. Bad! Now, not so much for us, but for others, the low ceiling height could be a problem. All double deckers have this. Say, problem. And verdict! Very happy with it! A 10! Now, let's have a look at the fresh water installation beginning at the outside, where we find the intake for the fresh water tank. and an outside connection. 
Then there is the tank. A water pump with pressure tank. And to measure the content, I fixed an ultrasonic sensor. The plastic piping with fittings of the Multifit brand is like you would use in a regular house. And the bus has also regular faucets. Good! The 600 liters tank is big enough and was cheap. This water pump delivers water pressure like at home, although not completely silent. The Multifit piping is very good, no leaks at all even after 4 years moving around. Bad! I would not use the outside connection nor the intake again. The connection because of the pressure limiter in it. 0.7 bar is just not enough if you're used to more. And the intake because it is just more convenient to make a simple connection to the tank. To fill it up I would have used a stop with a floating device. The sensor is slow in reading and sometimes inadequate because of the moving liquid. And verdict! We're happy with it, but do it different next time. An 8. On to the gas installation. Here we have an outside connector which leads to the 100 liters tank which is equipped with the necessary safety devices. Inside the bus, the devices on gas are the water heater and we use gas for cooking. Good! That gas tank contains loads of energy in a relatively small space. Filling the tank is easy. Regulations in our country demand an annual check, so it is quite safe. The water heater is not in the living space, so no dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning. Bad. Nothing, it is fine. And verdict. Satisfied, a 9. The wastewater system consists of a 300 liters black water tank and 200 liters grey water tanks. All are just like the freshwater tank, equipped with ultrasonic sensors. For emptying, the tanks have storage connectors to which you can connect flat hoses. Good! The 300 liters black water tank is big enough. That tank is at a good spot, more or less outside. You won't smell it. The storage system is great and emptying is very easy. Bad. Now 200 liters for grey water is on the small side, but there is no alternative just with gravity, without using a pump and I didn't want to use a pump. As I said with the fresh water, the sensors are just not that good. And verdict. Overall good, an 8. Talking electrics now. We have a Victron 3000 watts charger transformer with 4 230 ampere hour batteries, a Cyrix battery combiner and a 24 volts circuit. Lights have these wireless switches which are also connected through a home wizard to an app on the phone. The bus has no solar panels, for backup we have a generator. Good! The Victron charger transformer is invisible and therefore great. I calculated that we can run the bus on the batteries for 5 days and we experienced that that matches reality. In general this setup is great. I have no regrets on running everything on 24 volts and not having an additional converter to 12 volts. We never missed any solar panels, we do drive from socket to socket and never had to use the generator. I could have left the generator out completely but I couldn't have known that up front and it is good to know that it is there. Bad. The wireless receiver runs on 230 volts and the LEDs on 24 volts, so that forced me into a 24 volts, 230 volts combination. That turns out to be reliable, but still a bit unnecessary complicated. The home wizard is a nice gadget, but it is seldom used in reality. And verdict. We're happy, a 9. For heating, we can use the Webasto diesel heater that came with the bus, the ACs and additional we have a small mobile heater on paraffin oil. To be honest, the whole setup was never designed for winter conditions. Good! Well, they all work, but that's about it. The mobile heater is the best. Bad! 
The white bus stop is loud and a bit smelly inside the bus, therefore we never use it. The ACs are okay, but limited in capacity. That goes for heating and cooling. The door to the room where the outside units are has to be open to use them, and they are not that loud, but hearable for neighbors anyway. They function only for the part of the bus where they are. We use the mobile heater where we need it. And verdict! It's just enough for our use, a 6. The bathroom has two doors, where one switch switches two locks. We shower in the sitting bath and we have a macerating toilet. Good! The locks are inexpensive, very simple and they work great. Having your own shower with you is great, but a sewer connection gives less stress. The toilet works great too. Bad! I wanted a composting toilet from the start, but my wife couldn't get over the thought of having poo in the bathroom all the time. I still think it would be a good choice. And verdict! Great! A 10! Now the bus would be even better if it was suitable for use in winter. For that, some parts would need extra insulation to protect it from frost. And it would need some other form of heating, maybe an air heating system. Now we don't want one, but in general the bus would be more complete with a washing machine. I was charmed by this little fellow. A composting toilet would free up the space of the black water tank. That freed up space could for instance be used for an outside AC unit. That's it, now let me take you through this bonus material here. The nightmare of someone driving a vehicle that is as high as the legal limit is damaging the roof. Or worse. Most of the time everything is fine, it only looks scary. Now this is the What Hit The Bus compilation, a series of videos of things, well, always three branches, hitting the bus. How are these trees cut? Well, by vehicles like ours. If the branch is soft, there is no problem. But trees are weird because at one time there is no problem, and just a few weeks later... But if you see it coming, it will be okay because you adjust your speed. We left the three hatches open and now are still eating cherries. I have nothing to say. Neither have I. <laughs>